So, um, are you able to share your screen? And if not, with the packet, if not, I'm going to invite, because I'm not logged in as Zoom, so I don't have the capacity. Jody or Aaron can share their screen. Aaron, do you mind sharing your screen? Sure, I can do that. Thank you. Pull that up right now. So while Aaron is bringing that up, I will just start by saying. Can everyone see that okay? Not yet. Yes. All right, let me try that again. You know, three years in, you'd think we all could do this in our sleep and all the technology. But some, I think, I think hybrid creates that that experience for us. Yeah. There we go. All right. We okay. see it now, Erin. Thank you. Okay. So, you know, we're here talking about 2022, which seems like 100 years ago. Um, so first of all, I do want to say um, thank you for the opportunity. I also want to preface that we usually do a more formal report with the whole team, but that takes a lot of time shifting from person to person to person. And so I have my esteemed colleagues, Erin. Rafalowski, our Director of Marketing, and Jody Lapierre, our Director of Visitor Experience. And the sales team are conspicuously absent because they are, actually Kelly is with them. They are on their way driving back from a sales mission and client event in New York City. And otherwise they would be here. So um, just wanted to start off by thanking the team for being here. Seems like we've got a call from the question from the audience. Um, so the uh, 2022 was a year of building and rebuilding. And so um, the most obvious building was our new building. We moved into our new space on Brindley Street, which has been a really exciting opportunity for us to be back in, in one place under one roof. Um, but other things that we've been building and rebuilding on include some of our advocacy work. Um, and there's a few certain areas that I'd really like to, to call attention to is uh, reestablishing matching funds, New York State matching funds. That was a big advocacy piece for us. Every year we go through the stance where the governor's budget looks at the past year's governor's budget and drops in a number. And then the legislature responds and says, hey, this isn't going to work for us. So um, back in the Pataki administration was the last time matching funds was at $5 million level. We are grossly underfunded compared to our other state tourism offices. So matching funds, we were able to lobby to get an additional $1 million back into the budget. So from $2.5 million to $3.5 Three, no, 2.25 to 3.25 million. And how that impacts us is um, regionally um, in the Finger Lakes region, we use those dollars to support the Cayuga Lake Scenic Byway and Blue Way Trail, for example. So we, we did a, a focused um, program on showing that the Blue Way Trail and the Byway is a year round asset. It's not just a summer activity. Um, we also contribute to the um, Finger Lakes Regional Tourism Council for regional PR um, and media representation. And then locally, we use matching funds to help us host media and influencers into the community, but as well to pay for the design work and the printing of our travel guide. So those matching funds dollars are really important to us. Another advocacy piece that we worked on was on the, the federal level trying to get J-1 visas, um, the number available increase. Uh, we have a huge workforce shortage. Um, these are folks who come from other countries who are coming specifically to work. It's, it's a really great opportunity for us. It would help address our huge workforce challenge. Um, the numbers are starting to increase. We're still asking for more, but our community has some work to do to support a J-1 visa worker program because part of part of that program is these folks need to have a place to live. So there's more work to be done related to that. A third area was 
um, reflected in our, our farm to fork tourism, our agriculinary tourism micro grants. Those grants uh, in the past, they were tiny, tiny, last dollar in $500 reimbursable grants. Looking at the program and looking at the needs of our community, we boosted that program. Um, the budget, we actually moved to $20,000 with a top grant of $2,000, and they weren't all reimbursable. We would, we would ask um, for a partial, pay we would do partial payments. So we also opened that beyond just uh, farmers and producers to include restaurants who source locally so that it would be a way to help our, our restaurants who are still struggling. So we were able to get over $9,000 worth of micro grants out the door. Um, we had some timing with some projects where it didn't quite work out. So we actually rolled those dollars that were not granted in 2022 into the 2023 budget, which then made that pot back to $20,000 for this current year instead of the $10,000 where it was originally budgeted. Um, and uh, happy to say we had, I believe, nine applications for the first round of the micro grants. So looking good. Um, an, another area of advocacy that we worked for is the airport. You know, when we lost American Airlines, that was a huge blow, not just to our airport, but to small second tier cities nationwide. And a lot of times people have been saying, you know, what was the deal? Why weren't our flights successful? And the reality was the majority of our flights out of um, uh, Ithaca Airport were flying at 90% to 100% capacity. So it was not that we are not an attractive destination. It was simply a pilot shortage. And so being able to manage that message, especially in our tourism industry, to make sure people understand it's not that that Ithaca can't support it, it's with the pilot shortage is impacting all of us, but there, here are other ways you can get here. And we're continuing to work with the airport. Um, and then uh, I'm going to actually stop with advocacy because I feel like I just could go on and on for days with this. But um, Aaron, if you don't mind driving forward to the, the next piece, because I believe at this point I am going to, oh, the conference center was the last piece that I wanted to talk about, but I can talk more in the sales section. So okay. now if you don't mind driving and chatting, Aaron, we'll talk a little bit more about the marketing programs. All right. Thanks, Peggy. I'm going to really just provide here an overview of our marketing strategy and talk about some, give a little more context to some of the programs highlighted in the annual report. So we did relaunch visitithica.com last year. That was a big um, project. And I know we interacted with a lot, with that received feedback from a lot of different stakeholders. Um, and kind of the question is, you know, why, why is that so important? And really, uh, as you have may have experienced yourselves, like Google is doing the best they can to really keep people on the <laughs> Google page with travel planning info. So we really want to uh, really maintain and increase our authority to respond to like what questions people would be asking when they're travel planning. And some of the session decrease that you see, we did really anticipate that can happen with the launch of a new site. And we're also following some of the greater travel tourism uh, trends. So that we weren't surprised by, but we also um, are monitoring engagement metrics. And those are really important to us as well, talking about the quality of traffic to our site. And what we are seeing is typically people are spending, visitors to our site, they're spending more time on our website. Um, the bounce rate is down. And these are a few of the metrics that we're also looking at that are trending very positively. Um, the other thing that was has been a big success since the launch of the new website is our events pages are performing really well. Um, we moved that away from a subdomain and it's all kind of part of visitithica.com more directly now. And that has also helped us to streamline some of our processes. So those of you that have been logging into the extranet, you now have one login and you can enter um, your events in the same place that you update your listing. We are also really um, happy to continue a partnership with Book Direct, which allows for people to search for accommodations directly on our site. And then 
uh, based on availability, and then they're linked to directly to our partners' uh, reservation pages. So that is also kind of where the website is tying into making some of our own internal processes a little bit more efficient. And let's look now at um, touching here. Again, you're seeing these trends that just of interest for 2020, 2021, 2022. And additional KPIs that we're looking at are travel guide requests as well as email signups. And both of those um, we felt were really strong. We saw growth in 2022. Uh, and the blog post, I just like to point these out. This is the top five by sessions, but this is where we, again, and I encourage all of you to think about this in your own marketing of answering the questions that your visitors or customers might have. We work really closely with visitor experience team. So we're getting feedback on what people are asking when they walk into the visitor centers, and then as well as paying attention to some of the um, search trends too. And geographic area. So there's so many different ways that we look at this or we can look at this. Uh, again, going back to working with visitor experience, we're sharing, but we're looking at both walk-in traffic and then how that compares to our Google Analytics uh, geographic info. But here's a snapshot really just if you're to get a sense of traffic of from New York State versus outside of New York State. Um, feeder markets that continue to be really strong for us are Philadelphia. Um, as well as Buffalo. And we have done um, some targeted advertising in that Buffalo area. They tend to be year round travelers. They're staying in the winter and early spring. It's not the biggest piece of our uh, you know, visitor pie, but it's I think it's one that um, has a lot of value. And I also wanna just point out to the website sessions from the New York City area. This is really New York City, it's the boroughs and beyond, it even touches into parts of New Jersey. Um, this is the New York City DMA, and this continues to be one of our, our top areas for seeing uh, traffic. So social media, this is primarily really representing um, <clears throat> an, a, you know, a, an organic approach to social. So we on social, especially and throughout our marketing, but we're trying to hit people at different times and they're, in their travel planning, you know, from the inspiration to the actual booking. Um, so a few things to just highlight here, we're really continuing to follow, not just where our followers are up, which is great. Uh, we really have one of the top accounts in the Finger Lakes on Instagram in terms of flower followers. I think uh, only Visit Rochester is really slightly ahead of us from a tourism perspective, but we are looking at um, how people are engaging with our content. So for example, if you look at that top nine, and this is leading with waterfalls. So often why you will continue and always see those waterfall images on the cover of our travel guide in our advertising on a market. You know, that's what people are certainly connecting with. But that top winter image was actually shared over 650 times as a, a reel on Instagram. And that's the kind of stuff we get really excited about because that's either people are kind of we're tapping into the nostalgia or they're tagging a friend and encourage, you know, thinking about traveling together. Um, so this is kind of the overview of, and you'll also see the email subscribe, subscribers noted there as well with a pretty strong open rate. So happy to answer any more social questions, but here's a, that's kind of a general overview. Um, the waterfalls challenge, I believe Jordan on our team has shared some more details regarding this. We'll be updating this program in 2023 but here are kind of the overall stats. And then campaigns and advertising. So our largest investment in paid advertising is really represented um, through, in 2022, through two significant programmatic digital campaigns, one through Sojourn, which is referenced there, and one through Brand USA. And you'll also see that the Brand USA included um, multiple touch points. And another thing about the Sojourn campaign that um, is interesting is we're working with a vendor that really has the ability through their algorithms to target people with the intent to travel. And that's kind of this, this profile that feels like it's, you know, it's close to what, to the target audience as we can possibly hit. Uh, the other benefit is we actually receive a lot of data from these campaigns. So we know essentially when someone may have been served an ad, 
uh, when they may have started their initiated a search booking and then that time between searching and actually coming for a stay. So those are things that are just interesting to pay attention to um, and also help us think about our timing in terms of when we're sending messages. But overall, this really represents, um, and the other thing about Sojourn is we did a, a Northeast focus, um, but we also included all of our direct connection cities that the airport had served at that time. So that um, is another way that we're really, where the digital component can be pretty powerful. Um, and what you'll see from this, again, overview, sample of what we've done, that we really have a variety of mediums here. So we have everything from radio to partnering on some video content um, to also digital and even print. A um, couple things I'd like to point out, and I can share some links later on. Um, Flock Finger Lakes, if you haven't seen their long format videos, they're really informative and really, uh, they have a very loyal, strong following with lots of good comments. Uh, the other thing that was pretty exciting this year, working with Uplifted Ithaca on a video project to specifically welcome LGBTQ plus travelers. And um, a couple of these also represent longstanding relationships. Heritage Radio, we've been working with for a few years now, and their producers and hosts have even visited the Ithaca area. They've um, taped shows here. They have interviewed our cider makers. So there are a few, again, of the big highlights. And then PR and earned media. This um, has been exciting to see the successes in 2022. You'll, in your packet, each of those articles, um, you could actually click those articles if you want to go directly to them and read them. Um, in terms of, of hosting and, and trends, so our responses to media actually are slightly down from 2021, and to be honest, but our additional mentions in web and print are definitely up and the amount of media that we hosted are up. So we were just talking about, you know, 2022, people were like eager to travel. We were also excited to host people that were actually like on assignment for articles. Um, it was just much more kind of like proactive in 2022. And Jumping ahead now to the media influencer fan visits, we had 11 individual trips that we hosted. Um, and this, you know, there's a lot of work and time that actually goes into each of these 11 trips. We certainly received many more requests via email or direct message on our, on our social channels, but we take time to really vet who we're working with. And also, especially in the outdoor space, we think a lot about, you know, the quality of the influencer. So these may not be the people with like the biggest followings, but this micro influencer, they often, if you look at the comments, if you see what type of work they're involved in, it's coming from a really genuine place. Um, you know, we want the influencer that is here to primarily like participate in the activity. You know, they care about, um, you know, they think about sustainable travel. They care about how they're, um, what they're portraying for like safe outdoor recreation. And, you know, from there, they're taking a picture. It's not like it's the picture first in front of a waterfall. Um, and then Karina, for example, this has been a, a great relationship. She, with each of these influencers, we actually um, would have some type of agreement or an idea of the content that we're expecting them to um, deliver once they're here. And then she went above and beyond. And actually I had just learned that she has another trip planned on her own in April that she's initiating um, because she wants to do something more family focused and really enjoyed her time here. Um, so for each of these inquiries, we're like, you know, Rob is customizing our communications manager. We're working to give them each their own um, specialized itinerary too. And they're often self-guided, but we're still meeting with them and we're still kind of encouraging them to explore like beyond downtown and all of Tompkins County. Um, and a lot of the international note here, that is certainly some of these relationships um, really are because of our connection with the Regional Tourism Council, as well as I Love New York's um, PR agency. So yes, feeling great about the 11 individual trips. And I know that we have uh, a couple of people we've already hosted this year are our schedules. 
And now I'm going to pass it on to, I don't think she really needs an introduction, but Jody LaPierre, Director of Visitor Services. Thanks, Erin. I'm always amazed at how much work we do. So it's fun this time of the year to sit down and do these annual reports and presentations because it's a good reminder of how much work our organization does. But once sales and marketing gets people here, it's the visitor experience's job to take care of them. And we do that in many different ways. So first, I want to start with our Ithaca Loves Teachers celebration. Um, it, it's a little odd to, to go back to last year's celebration when we just wrapped up this year's, but let's do that. So we chose winter for the Ithaca Loves Teachers celebration because it's a slower time of year. Lodging properties have lower occupancy rates. Our attractions, our restaurants are a lot slower that time of the year. Um, so we were looking for something to fill that need with teachers having nearly that full week off most of the time for President's Week, it really became a natural fit for this community. We're based on higher education. We appreciate teachers. We appreciate education. Why not bring them here to celebrate them and hope, help them relax and recharge and enjoy the area? Um, so last year's celebration, we had about, well, actually backing up, this is a collaboration too between the Tompkins Chamber and the Downtown Ithaca Alliance. Uh, we could not do this without their help. Um, but the marketing team for Visit Ithaca handles the social media, the communications with teachers, and a lot of the media and PR that comes from the Ithaca Loves Teachers celebration, while the visitor experience department really handles a lot of the other details. From budgeting, we start in October um, to talk about the budget for the following year, from sponsorship sales and all of the parts and pieces that come with that, to communicating with merchants for onboarding, facilitating getting their uh, deals loaded on the digital pass with Bandwango, and then also testing and troubleshooting the pass once it's live, making sure it's working well before it fully launches. And then our team is also doing outreach to event producers um, they start doing that in November, December to try and get people on board to do events during Ithaca Loves Teachers um, so that there's more for them to enjoy. So we had about 2,000 teachers that participated last year. You'll see we, we documented um, just over 2,300 redemptions. I will say that redemption number is low. We know a lot of the merchants don't have them go fully through the redemption process on the digital pass. Um, so we know that that's a bit low. Um, we estimated about $200,000 in economic impact for the Ithaca Loves Teacher celebration. Um, and that's a smaller year. Uh, this year is certainly going to be more than that. Some of our feeder markets for this celebration cover the Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse area. They're very much in line with what marketing is seeing as our feeder markets as well. And the surrounding counties around Tompkins County right here in the Finger Lakes region. We also see people from Northern Pennsylvania and Northern New Jersey. Both uh, participation from both those areas have been increasing quite a bit the last couple of years. Some of the best deals for this celebration are often the restaurant deals that do buy one, get one or buy one 50% off. Some of our restaurants tell us this is their best week of the year next to graduation weekends. Um, so I call that a win, especially with those that are still trying to recover from the pandemic. The other note that we've um, seen with Ithaca Loves Teachers of the teachers that fill out our survey that we send at the end of the year, consistently over 60% of those respondents say that they visit a new business when they come for Ithaca Loves Teachers, which is fabulous. We've got a lot of repeat visitation here. So it's nice that when teachers are coming, they're looking for new things and exploring new things, which helps us connect some of our new partners um, to those repeat visitors. So moving on to our international growth, um, some of you, most of you may remember travel restrictions really weren't fully removed until mid 2022. So it took until the summer before we started really seeing our neighbors to the north. Um, our Canadian neighbors came back in full force through the summer and fall. We also had visitation from uh, 78 other countries so for a total of 79 outside of the US last year. Some of those feeder markets were Canada, Israel, Germany, uh, the United Kingdom, Netherlands. There was also Australia and France rounded out some of the top countries there. When we were talking with our Canadian visitors last year, I worked a few shifts up at uh, Teganic last summer and fall. 
and it, they were just as excited to be able to come back here as we were to see them. So it was really great to have that, see them come back and enjoy the area. But a lot of the data that we collect in our, collect in our visitor centers help both our marketing and sales department make strategic decisions too. Because Germany and UK are one of our top international feeder markets, there was an opportunity that came along from I Love New York that they were bringing a media contingent here from Germany. So we knew that was a, a good opportunity to hop on. So we participated in that and hosted some media here from Germany. Our sales department also has some great or some strong partnerships with Visit USA Germany and Visit USA UK. Um, and they're working with those organizations all the time on sending people here. And then also our branded products uh, make certainly make their way to international countries as well. Uh, and it comes as no surprise based on what I just shared with you that the top three countries that our products are going to outside of the US are Canada, Germany, and the United Kingdom. Um, so it just, just shows that we are alignment and strategy across all departments, uh, but it also demonstrates the uh, how much the community supports international travel too. Um, so I'm going to jump over to our arrival to departure tourism training program too. So we bought, brought back live classes in 2022. You can go back up there and it was on that first page still. Um, we brought back live classes in 2022. We trained about 42 people over nine sessions. Some of those major employers that we trained included Cornell Conference Services. They hired a bunch of seasonal employees to help them throughout the summer months with their conferences that come into the area. While we were training them, we realized most of them were brand new to the area. They really haven't spent, hadn't spent much time here. So it was a great opportunity to share with them resources that are available and teach them about the area so that they can answer questions from conference attendees that are coming through. We also trained um, all of the cohorts with the Hospitality Employment Training Program that's uh, run through GIAC. We also trained um, Chris from the Workforce Development Board, also some Workforce Career Center staff. It is important to know, I know we haven't announced this um, broadly yet, so this may be news to, to a lot of people. We did learn late in 2022 that the arrival to departure tourism training program will not be supported as of April 30th of this year. So our short-term plan for that is to do a familiarization tour this spring and hopefully do another one this fall and then do some networking events throughout the remainder of the year. Our long-term plan, we've got a small working group together that's developing a survey. We will be distributing that to employers here soon to identify some tourism training skill gaps and work to identify and build the next generation of tourism training. So please watch for that to hit your inbox and please share your feedback related to that. I'm gonna move on to offsite activations and Ithaca 101s here. So our touch points, overall touch points were up about 10% last year to nearly 70,000, uh, which is pretty fantastic. And a lot of that was because of the offsite activations and in-person classes, those or offsite activations, those came roaring back at the colleges with classes being in person these days. And they saw an increase of 275% traffic over 2021. Um, we actually had 19 offsite activations in 15 virtual and in-person Ithaca 101 sessions. So the offsite activation started uh, a while, long time ago, well before the pandemic, because in the visitor centers, we'd get parents and students that would come in for graduation weekend when they'd be exploring the area and they would lament that they didn't know how much there was to see and do here. So this was our way of trying to get in front of parents and students and their family or students, their parents and family members uh, earlier in their time here. So we do this, we do perspective and um, admitted student presentations. We also are on site for family weekends at both Cornell and Ithaca College. We are on site for, actually last year, one of the other activations we did was at Ithaca College for the Special Olympics. So we were up there both days those events were taking place uh, as a way to talk with both athletes and their parents about things that they can do um, when they weren't competing if they wanted to. 
And then the Ithaca 101s, they got their start a little before the pandemic. We were doing those over family weekends, where basically it's about 25 pages of a PowerPoint that's full of images. We just show beautiful images of the area and talk about what they're seeing and share what they, what they can see and do off campus when they're visiting. Um, when the pandemic hit, Ithaca College admissions reached out to us because they had started doing some webinars and they wanted to do one surround about the community. Uh, they were getting a lot of questions and it became a big part of the decision for students as they were making um, their college decision on where they wanted to go. They were no longer selecting places just on academic programs. There was more that went into it. So that's how our presentations called Life Off Campus in Ithaca, New York got its start. In fact, we had um, one of them last night at Ithaca College. We've done multiple, probably eight to 10 of these just last year alone. We have audiences in the hundreds sometimes with them. There were close to 100 students and their family members and friends watching last night. Um, but that's something that really helps us reach those folks before they get here and help maybe make their decision a little bit easier, easier about coming to the area. Um, we also started pilot testing our virtual Ithaca 101s for conferences last year uh, as a way to see if this might be an opportunity with the conference center opening to get in front of conferences a couple of weeks before they arrive and change up the PowerPoints, really make them tailored to the time that they're going to be here, both in seasonality, pull in the events that are happening while they're here, the live music, the theater, the shows, and which might help them think along the lines of, oh, maybe I should come a couple of days earlier. Maybe I'll stay a little bit longer past my conference and maybe I'll bring my family with us and we can make it into a little mini vacation, which then could grow overnight. So we tried that with a couple of conferences last year and it went over really well. So I think we'll definitely continue to do that and make it available to conferences coming in, both for the conference center and for many other things. Those are pretty labor intensive because we do customize them, but it really does make the best experience for audiences that are coming here and can create return visitation too. So lastly, we have our accessibility survey. So you probably heard us talk about this last year. I Love New York developed a survey instrument to allow us to go out into partners and to trails and attractions and restaurants and lodging properties to review how accessible they are, not to penalize anybody at all, but really to find out who is and are there places doing quiet hours? Are there restaurants that have Braille as menu op options? And taking that information and incorporating it both in our website, which we're working on doing with the launch of the new site, but also pushing that information to I Love New York. So as they're doing their marketing, accessibility is a really big push for them. And they've got a whole page on the I Love New York website that is all about accessible attractions in the area. So this information populates that and helps inform uh, people landing on that website. And with that, I am gonna pass it over to Peggy. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Erin, both of you for sharing trying to condense a year's worth of work into 40 minutes, 40 minutes, give or take. So I am speaking on behalf of the sales team, and I mentioned they're already on the road. Um, 2022 was back in person for almost all of our trade shows. We were in domestic and international buyer shows, as well as um, meeting and event shows. Um, and really, it is all about the numbers. So I'm just going to direct you right to the to the chart. Um, in 2022, we produced 66 leads to our partners and of those 35 booked. Um, the potential economic impact calculator, that number represents if every single lead that we sent out last year was actually able to be booked here in Tompkins County, it would have produced $3.3 million. However, you know, sometimes things don't fit. We don't have the dates, the rates. We can't meet what the, the planners are looking for. So the actual booked economic impact is the, the bottom number there. Um, some other things that the sales team accomplished. We had the a great partnership with Brand USA, which is the federal tourism DMO. And um, I love New York to bring in some folks from New Zealand. 
And um, that may not seem like a, a great opportunity because New Zealand does not fly to Ithaca. However, they do have direct flights right into JFK and we have direct flights from JFK right into Ithaca. So it's a, another way for us to leverage another potential audience that may not have heard about Ithaca in the past. Um, I mentioned the trade shows that we've been at. One in particular I'd like to call out is the uh, representation for the Wine, Waters and Wonders Collaborative. Um, that is a, actually it's a five, five night, four day, four day, five night, I'm reversing those, itinerary through New York State. And um, we are an associate member. We were not a, a leading member of this program. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sarah from our team was able to take those appointments at IPW. IPW is the largest inbound international buyer trade show that happens in the country. And so she talked about Wine, Waters and Wonders, but by being there in person, she could give a little bit of extra love to our destination. And when people were trying to figure out where they may want to spend that overnight in the Finger Lakes, by Sarah being there and sharing what we had to offer, she had ways to influence some of those buyers. And that's a business to business um, trade show. So it's the travel agents in the different countries who are coming here to, to learn about product offerings and to build that into their catalogs. Um, I mentioned the sales mission last year, uh, still under the Retreat to Ithaca banner. Uh, that is those slogan that we use for meetings markets right now. We did a sales mission in Albany uh, in partnership with our hotels and we also, and Cultivare actually was participating with us last year. And um, we tied that into the timing of Meeting Planners International annual gala. So we were able to have a bigger impact while saving on our travel expenses. And then the other item is the production of Threshold 360 tours. Um, these are virtual tours and you know, pandemic, a lot of planners are not even back in their offices. So it's, it's managing, how do you get people to come here and experience it? And one of the first things when we're talking about the conference center, the first question we get is, oh, where do we fly into that? So we can say, well, Ithaca International, where is it? What does that look like? So these 360 tours actually helped us to be able to showcase the airport virtually, how, how to get from the airport to downtown where the conference center is, the properties downtown. But we've also realized it's a really great tool for leisure travel. So we've also included some of our state parks. And so we have up to 15 tours downtown. There's been a number of tours actually done downtown too. Um, so we've completed 15 of these virtual tours. Our contract goes through the end of April. So we do have a few more in the pipeline. Um, and the beauty of these is that those tours, they live on the partner's website. They live on our website. They are fed to Google. So they live forever, no matter how long we do have this contract or not. And um, so they're, they're evergreen tools for visitors to get a little taste of what we have to offer. And then, of course, I need to talk about the conference center because we're talking about the conference center a lot. And so there was a lot of work uh, building systems and building the building. So if uh, you happen to go by Green Street every single time I drive by, I practically jump out of the car to see what the change has been. Um, you can also follow on the live construction site webcam. There's a really cool time-lapse video so you can see all the progress up to this point. Um, but it was in the summer where you could see the um, elevator towers above ground. And then by the end of the year, you could see at least all three floors and now drywalling and it's been exciting to see the But some of the things that's been happening behind the scenes um, this is a big collaboration. It's a collaboration with the uh, ASM Global, who is our operator, with the local Downtown Ithaca Local Development Corporation, which is a really long name. LDC, you'll hear us referred to frequently. 
um, to be able to get those um, relationships with the operator in place, with the Imagine Ithaca Hotel Group to help us formulate booking guidelines to make sure that we're maximizing the piece of businesses that we bring into this community um, by, by looking at every single piece that comes through to us to make sure it's going to give us the big, biggest benefit. So um, a, a few of the big milestones included hiring the executive director for the LDC. Um, ASM has been engaged and has been really helpful in the pre-opening work. Uh, we developed, the CBD developed the website and landing page and that is launched, the construction cam I already gushed about, and then all of the marketing materials as we've been out and about on the road. You know, it, it's a lot of collaborations and we can't obviously do this alone. It's important for all of us to work together. Um, we so appreciate the support of STPD. We appreciate our team. And on the final page of the report is our whole team. Um, just as a reminder, we are a division of the chamber and all of us wear many hats. Uh, so a thank you to our current team members to some of the folks who were seasonal and have moved to different locations. Um, and a huge thank you to our collaborators um, because we all succeed together. So I will be quiet and ask if there are any questions for myself or for Jody or for Aaron. Thank you, Aaron, for driving. Mike. I probably should know this. What's the, um, when do you think the grand opening for the center will be? And are you already trying to pre-book that? And what's that outreach kind of look like? Yes. So yeah. the first question, we just got an update yesterday. Um, because the conference center is, is within a whole structure with housing and things above us, the health and safety system for the whole building is one unit. So while the conference center portion itself will be technically open or ready by, you know, September, October, we're not going to book any business until everything above us is finished. And we now know the health and safety um, testing probably will not be happening until mid-January. So now instead of January, we're, we're not comfortable booking anything before February. From the CVB's perspective, we are looking for further out business. Um, not to say we don't wanna fill those early in dates, but we're looking for those bigger pieces of business who booked further in advance. So we, we have submitted contracts already. We've had some folks and that's quite frankly why we've been pushing um, the relationship with ASM Global. You know, most places they, when they open, they they have all these systems. So their booking system, for example, and the calendaring and the room diagramming software, those are all things that the CVB started because ASM has no staff right now. We are the staff until they have people here on site. And so um, we have a, a, this is where I wish I could tag in or Kelly, you can ask Lisa in the van if you want. We have a, a rotary um, group that we've already sent contracts to. Um, we have a couple other pieces of business that are interested, but we need to get um, menus from the operator because they want an inclusive price and we can't, you know, oh, okay, you can have chicken sandwiches. We don't know what their menus are going to be, right? So we can't actually complete those bids until we have that data. So we, we are actively selling um, and we have been um, all of 2022. And um, I, had to, I had to adjust our team's um, goals because you know we take this seriously, this needs to succeed. So these are some of their annual goals for their work plan is you need to send so many leads with so many room nights um, to make sure that we're, we're meeting the expectations for the community. And then it was like, oh, okay, shift that forward because we're not quite ready. So very long answer. I'm sorry. No, that's <laughs> fine. It's like you, I see making progress. It's exciting. Yes. Uh, so two questions. One is a follow-up to Mike's. Is So is ASM Global able to sign contracts today? Like I know you're sending them out, but they're able to get them back and sign them if somebody says we're yes. interested. 
Yes. Okay. So, so the the Rotary Group, as an example, because they're a little bit different than a, a, a an association would be. They are an association, but they're a little bit more, I guess, relaxed and flexible. And and they have programming that isn't one hundred percent under the four walls of the conference center. So yeah, absolutely. And and typically they don't like to to sign any contracts until a year in advance. And we're like, we need, you know, we started this conversation last fall. We need we need these systems in place so we can sign them now. Great. That's great. And then in terms of your sales team lead and activity, mm -hmm. um, how does that compare to like 18 and 19 in terms of volume? Well, you know what? I am not going to lie to you. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I'd be happy to get yeah. that info and, and follow I'm up. I'm curious how we're sort of. I can tell you, world. I can tell you for 19, because I think we had a pretty big transition year. And so I was covering my job plus trying to do the, the meeting and conference sales. So I can guarantee that 19 numbers are definitely lower than both yeah. 21 and 22, but I don't know them specifically. Okay. And then my next question, last question, is there a best practice number for like close rate between leads sent and leads booked? Is there something that you target? Because not always more leads means more bookings. Exactly. And and I, I would welcome any of our accommodation partners to, to chime in on this. We work very hard to make sure we're, we're not sending leads that are bogus just to pad our numbers. It's, it's a waste of our time. It's a waste of our partner's time. Sure. One of our, I hate to keep saying this, but our community is unique. So one of our challenges is, you know, these are the premises, Sunday through Thursday, and we want them, you know, anytime except for May through October. So we find a piece of business and it's like, oh, that would be great, except I actually just booked something. So I, I don't know. I don't know that I could use an industry ratio sure. relating to to this destination, and I don't know. If, and if I'm if I'm telling lies, please mm -hmm. call me out on it. Please. You're not. Um, and I think each hotel has its own metric based on the size of its property and what it can do. So there isn't an average that we can say that works well for Ithaca. Oh. Unique and eclectic. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. You're welcome. Peggy, I've got a question on the of uh, the 360 videos. Mm -hmm. uh, they are available for public use. Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah and I, I haven't had a chance to look at them. They're, oh, they're yes. on your website. They're on our Which website. Um, they should be on any of the partners who has had one completed. They they should be on their websites also because they're welcome to use them. We, we did one for the airport. It should be live on the airport's website as well. Um, okay. They're on the conference yeah. center's website. I'm getting all these notes from people and I'm like, are they giving me links so I can tell you where to find them? Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, they're up there. They are absolutely up Peggy. there. Hey, hey Peggy. Peggy. Yeah. It's Kelly. It's Kelly and Lisa. Hi. Yay. <laughs> We're, we're stopped to pee, but we thought we'd share with us CPB. Um, anyway, I just wanted to say we were listening to you and we wanted to clarify about the 360 videos. If you're on like Hilton or Marriott, we can't necessarily put those on those websites, but what they should be on are people's signatures. So when we email clients, they should be on your signatures. Thank you for the clarification. And just to let you know in the van that we're recording this meeting or this part of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to provide entertainment always for the STPB meeting. <laughs> you never disappoint, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, and if you click, if you were doing a Google business search, like for the airport and you click see photos, the 360 tours that pop up, you'll actually see that they're threshold branded. So you'll know that those are the more recent content. And then on our website, there's actually, you'll see, um, it'll be, it's like a slight drop down on each listing, but they appear in both places. Is there anything? Some, some others. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah. in the interest of staying on time, I'm going to 
probably move forward soon. I, I have one last question though, and this is probably for Lisa and, and Kelly in the car. Um, did you say till the end of April, you have an opportunity to collect, to have one of those 360 degree tours done? Is that correct? Our contract is through April. I know, Doug, we've been talking about having one done at the, yeah. the state. We just need to get it scheduled. That's all. Yes. Yeah. And we want to do one. Um, we've just been super busy. Like it's hard to find time to do it, but we, but I think we could find some time near the yeah. end of April. Yeah. 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 We, we actually... We do have a 360 degree tour from a few years ago, but we want to do a new one for you guys too. Beautiful. Yes. All right. Um, any other questions or I'm going to move forward? I do have a couple, which um, right. you can you could answer offline too. Peggy, you looked at 66 leads and 3.3 million in possible economic return. And then the second number was 35 booked, but a much smaller 861. Um, is that because we're booking smaller because we couldn't, we didn't get the bigger, um, conferences. It could be because of not having the larger conferences. It, it basically, and, and maybe one column I'll make a note to include for future is the, the number of room nights attached because the number of room nights, obviously the more room nights is going to have a higher or room shorter room. conferences make yes. a difference. Okay. Um, the, um, Talked about 100 or 181,000 hits website in the New York region. I'm curious if we know how many of those are within our 50 mile radius or how many are outside of the 50 mile radius. In New York State? Yeah. Do you guys track that or can you tell me? And absolutely pull that data. I don't know, Aaron, that you've got the information handy, but the um, we focus outside, as you know, you hear me say that ad nauseum. So we can actually pull and go into the DMA, the DMAs, the destination uh, management areas. Mm -hmm. We keep throwing out alphabet soup without explaining them. So um, as Aaron mentioned, so when it's New York City DMA, it's New York City, Long Island, New Jersey, some Connecticut, et cetera. So we can absolutely dig in and um, tell you how many, do you want to know how many are within the 50 mile or? I could do the math. So either way, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm here's part of the reason I'm curious is that I do think that Visit Ithaca is a great resource for in-network. Now, whether those are people who are living here or people who are visiting here and then say, what am I going to do tonight? Um, and, um, and the only feedback that I have about it, I'm glad our events page is getting a lot of hits, but I'm not sure how the info is collected on that. And there, there really is not a really good website in town that gives you everything. But clearly there are businesses that are not included on there because they're probably not giving you information or it's not collected. They or, update you know. it themselves. So right. if people are not entering the data then, and they don't need to be, you know, a chamber member, they don't need to be people we know if there's an event, as long as they're not political events. Right. No, I was just, I mean, you know, a quick look, there's some major concerts going on over the next two weeks that are not on there. And that surprises me. And it also feels like there's an opportunity there, at least for people who are in network, as well as for all of us who tend to use that website locally. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, I'm going to move forward with Community Celebrations Grant Review Committee. And I'm actually, I'm going to I will report on that. I actually serve on that committee. Um, you did get a, a separate attachment that lists all the all the applicants. Um, and I'll just go through the list real quick and tell you, I'll just tell you who was funded. Um, so we received 18 applications and actually 15 of them were funded most partially. Um, very few got full funding. Um, but to start out, we got the Brooklyndale Community Center, uh, got funding for the Brooklyndale Apple Festival. Brooklyndale Community Center applied again for the Gadzooks Zucchini Festival. <laughs> um, Enfield Community Council, uh, their Enfield Community Council Harvest Festival received funding. Um, Finger Lake Spins have a Finnish American Folkways Festival, and that got $1,000. Moving forward. <laughs> um, Friends of Ithaca Farmers Market, they're celebrating their 50th anniversary in 2023. They got their full funding, $2,500. Garden Old Home Days, $2,500. Tompkins County Walk and Talks got $1,200. Ithaca Youth Bureau, they're celebrating 75 years of serving the community, and they got $2,000 for this year. 
Lansing events, uh, their Lansing community celebration got $2,000. Central Immigrant Workers Past and Present, um, that's gonna take place on Labor Day. They got full funding, 25, I'm sorry, they got $2,000. Um, the Science Center Spooky Science is getting some funding, $2,000. Uh, State Theater, I recuse myself for this vote. State Theater of Ithaca, um, on behalf of Ithaca Porch Fest, um, we basically worked as their financial sponsor, um, their fiscal sponsor, I should say. Uh, Porch Fest got $2,000 through the State Theater. And finally, um, Summer Grooving in the Park, Southward Library Association is getting some funding. Town of Newfield, Newfield Old Home Days, $1,500. And Truman's Burgers Winterfest is getting $900. So we do need a vote to approve all these. And of course, if anyone has any questions about it, I'm here. Is yep. it more than applications than normal? That seems like a lot. It was high. It was yeah. higher than normal, yes. It was high. Um, and I think the total allotment was $31,969, um, which is slightly over budget, but we were told by, by Nick that that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that's being recorded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in, in the expectation that we'd have a, a budget adjustment coming up for this committee, uh, that we put some funding back into the, into the um, uh, fall round of grants uh, following this, I think that was the advice that we gave the committee. Yep. Doug. Actually, you want to turn off the recording because we were just doing it. For the oh, sure. We just, yeah, we were just doing it for that. Uh, yeah. Kill the recording. Doug, right. a few years ago, I think we ra either raised the amount, the minute, the yes. maximum amount of this grant. Yeah. Did, so um, are, do we get many people asking for the maximum?